different places in terms of how they approach sexuality there. And it took me a few years of going to those meetings before you know a different person in the group would present their work each month, and it took me about three years before I had the nerve to do that myself. But I was doing the work. You know, I was working with young people in New York City. I was um, working on projects I really cared about. I was doing all of that creative work. And no surprise, my sex life was on fire too, right? I was exploring kink and BDSM for the first time. I had a lover that I was learning a lot from, and I was really expanding and opening up. And I can remember one day when all of that clicked, and I was walking down Houston Street with Jillian, and I just said, I love my life. I love everything I do in my life. I, I, it's, it's like the best movie I've ever seen, and I can't wait to see what happens next. Have you ever felt that way? Yes. Like, our life is that awesome movie, and we're the star in it. And so it doesn't need to be sexuality. It doesn't, like, that for me was the thing that lit me up. But whatever it is that we're finding that thing that drives us, that, that brings up our fire, and, um, and that we follow it. So, um, so as I started that women's program, incredible women started showing up. And then I realized I was creating community around me. And, and then and there was this like spark that I was sending out, and then like the spark was coming back. Because that's how it works, right? The world needs us with whatever we put into it. And I was able to finally do that work because I knew I had been in their shoes. When I was younger, I wasn't ready. I hadn't been through the hard divorce and the pain. And I use that word really specifically um, because a lot of times, you know, I mean, same-sex marriage, marriage equality just came into being this year, but um, five years ago when I went through that, that was not a reality. And if I didn't use that language, if I didn't shift that language, people would just think, that, oh, it's just like another breakup. No, it was actually, it was a marriage, and it was a divorce, and it was that important. Um, so I knew what that was like. I knew what it was like to not have my own sexual voice and to struggle to find it and to find ways to express my own desire. I knew what it was like to not know what my desires were, to be asked by a lover, what do you want? And to have no idea what the answer was. I knew what it was like not to be able to have an orgasm and to be so frustrated that I didn't understand my own body and how it worked. So I understood all of those, those struggles and what it meant to be heartbroken. And I also knew what it was like to be in such a deep depression that I didn't think there was anything I could offer the world. I felt absolutely hopeless. Like, what am I gonna give the world? So I also knew what it meant to fully stand in my power and to own it. And to say, I'm not gonna make myself small anymore because maybe they're not gonna be able to handle all of who I am. Maybe the space can't really hold all of that. And so I had to stop that playing small. And so that was some of that empowerment process for me. So I actually wanna ask you to do another little partner exercise. And in thinking about your own story and the places of power that you feel like you've come to. And we're all on a journey and we're all a work in progress. But in thinking about like, wow, oh, there's this part of my life I feel really powerful in. What was the shift that made the difference? What was the thing that kind of like shifted the pendulum to the other side? Or what was the thing you learned how to do? Or who was the person that came into your life that mentored you and loved you and said, no, you can do this? So I just want to take another couple